Is the term JRPG derogatory? Short answer, no, or at least not anymore, and I don't think you're racist or xenophobic for saying it. I think there's enough people out there that have made it super clear that they use JRPG as a way to more clearly delineate different styles of RPG. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just done for the sake of convenience and to have a better picture of what someone is referring to when talking about a particular game. And for some, the term JRPG is seen as a badge of honor that distinguishes these games in a good way, implying a higher quality that sticks out from other RPGs. Of course, this is subjective. Everybody has their own little version of what it means, right? Or what it represents. That's how the term is used now in the current day. But I can understand seeing a game developer from Japan feeling wary about being separated from what is considered a normal RPG. This is especially so when the Western market came up with it, and Japanese people don't use the term JRPG at all. Naoki Yoshida recently did an interview regarding Final Fantasy XVI, and in it, he mentions how he used to not like the term JRPG. He doesn't seem to mind it now, but in the past, he felt that it was a derogatory term, because it felt like it was creating distance among his peers, and also pigeonholed him into just being one kind of thing. I like to think that I understand what he means, because as a weeb myself, the stigma regarding Japanese games in Western territories has always been apparent. And not just for Japanese games, but for Japanese culture and anime in general. I find this quite ironic, because all the best and most memorable stuff that brings a tear to people's eyes are almost always Japanese RPGs close to the end of a console's lifespan. Quite consistently, actually. But those games tend to be nostalgic for people. They grew up with it, so they feel more attached. Also, when they were kids, none of that stuff was perceived as anime. It just was what it was without any distinction. It was just a really good game, regardless of who made it, where it was made, or what arbitrary genre it belonged to. But now those kids are older and don't feel nostalgia for the newer stuff. They have also been conditioned and molded by the gaming press and influencers over time to believe that Japan is the weird stuff that only niche audiences care about, despite those games withstanding the test of time better than most Western games. I've never seen any super solid proof that JRPGs are this weird niche genre. I always hear people say that it is, but it always seems to perform quite well when one comes out. And Pokemon is one of the most popular IPs in the world. Dragon Quest is just a couple steps away from becoming a full-on religion in Japan because of how much people love it. Final Fantasy is beloved by multiple generations all over the world for different reasons. The Tales of series is still going strong, with one particularly successful game that just came out and did very well. The Persona games have been critically acclaimed for a long time. So, I really have no idea where people get this whole niche thing from, unless you show me some hard number showing that. I have the suspicion that someone is trying to downplay these developers' achievements because the people saying these things don't personally care for the genre and so they assume that it has a niche status. But that is just me speculating, do not take that for a fact. You can look a bit deeper into this and notice that Japanese games never win anything come award season. Sure, they get nominated so it doesn't look like the board is anti-anime or something, they always gotta have that one mainstream foreign game to make it seem more fair, but they ultimately never win anything. I'm not gonna rag on this point too much because I can guarantee you that there's some Japanese game awards happening out there where all of the anime games win and the western games barely win anything. We just don't see that, so we like to focus on what's happening on our side of the pond. But speaking of which, anytime westerners talk about Japanese games, JRPGs in particular, there's always this air of shame and embarrassment that gaming journalists have whenever they talk about Japanese RPGs or pretty much any other game that's not The Last of Us, basically. But yeah, like, I know a bunch of video game journalist teams where they always have the anime guy, right? They always relegate all of the weird, creepy anime games to the one guy that likes them so that they can put the review out and maybe mention them in the podcast as a Game of the Year contender, but ultimately that voice is never listened. In fact, I know this from personal experience. A long time ago, I used to work for a video game website and I was the Japanese games editor where I would talk exclusively about the Japanese games, while the rest of the team would just talk about the normal, regular, generalized Western games. Even when the games are good, they still have to let you know how strange they think they are. It's like a quota people have to fill where they can't say anything nice without throwing shade on top of that. 
which I think is a really unfair way to treat an avenue of gaming that has given us so much. And as far as I know, Japanese people don't talk anywhere near as much shit as we do about them. Perhaps they keep that to themselves, but hey, I'm just making assumptions. It just comes off as an arrogant culture that's underappreciating another culture because they're just different and value things outside of just shooting guns a lot, like forming relationships and playing baseball. Lots and lots of baseball. People say that they don't have any ill intent with the term JRPG. They just use it to categorize different games and it wasn't meant to be derogatory. And that's a fair thing to say and honestly I believe them. I don't think anyone should feel bad because Naoki Yoshida said a long time ago this felt derogatory but not so much anymore. But even then, I think it's an interesting thing to think about. Yoshi P said that back in the day, it made him feel bad because he felt separated from all of the popular kids at the gaming industry cafeteria table. And just because you personally didn't think it was hurtful, it still had that effect on someone that just wanted to be treated as an equal. It's kind of like when people use the term POC or person of color. All of us are equal human beings, right? So why is it that we need to make the distinction between white people and those other colored ones? You know what I mean? I personally don't like it when people call me a person of color because I think that making that distinction is just unnecessary. If you ask someone about it, they'll say it wasn't meant to be hurtful, but it doesn't matter what you feel about it because you're not on the receiving end of it. Although you didn't intend for that to bother me, it still bothers a little bit. So now see it through the perspective of Naoki Yoshida, who works tirelessly to be a part of these big Japanese creations. And so now see all of that be separated from just being called an RPG, right? No, 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 this is the, the different, the JRPG. That's the RPG from those guys. The term JRPG wasn't meant to be derogatory, but it still made people like Yoshida-san feel lesser anyway. And I think we need to consider those feelings. I don't think the solution is to ban the term JRPG. I already saw a news article about that and I'm like, no, 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 no. That, that would be stupid at this point, especially when the people being interviewed said that it doesn't really matter all that much anymore. I think it's enough to just keep Yoshida-san's thoughts in mind whenever you use the term and just realize that the term is kind of silly when you think about it. Why can't they just be RPGs? I know that some games have some elements that set them apart from their western counterparts, but that never stopped other games from belonging to a singular genre. For example, Tetris is very different from Portal, but they're still called puzzle games. Nobody's calling Tetris a Russian puzzle game or an R puzzler, or just taking the word puzzler and capitalizing the R to be silly. Call of Duty doesn't work in the same way as Splatoon does, but both of them are just still called shooters. Nobody out there is calling Splatoon a Japanese shooter or a J shooter or something like that. Maybe in music you can have stuff like J-pop and K-pop or whatever, but with games that's not really a thing. Super Mario Bros. was made in Japan, while Crash Bandicoot was not. Both are platformers, but no one calls Mario a J platformer. And so many people have grown up with Mario that most people don't even consider it a Japanese game. It's just a game. But those same people feel the need to look at other Japanese games that are more overt about their culture and they go, okay, okay, that's a Japanese game. Even though both games were made in the same territory. Metal Gear Solid and Thief are both stealth games, but there's no distinction between a Japanese stealth game and a Western one. Although I do hear a lot of people mock the MGS series for how goofy it can get and saying stuff like, oh, Japan, look at Japan being Japanese as it always is. You guys are just so weird, just like your commercials actually, even though America has really weird commercials too, but ignore that. Japan is gonna Japan, I guess. Even though there's tons of American games that also have some pretty goofy stuff in them, but those don't get called out anywhere near as often and not in the same manner, not in that same negative connotation, not with that unique air of contempt that you feel when game journalists and people of influence start talking about the weebs. If anything, you'll find game journalists praising Japanese games ironically. If they embrace a Japanese game, they have to say that it's the strangeness that makes it so good. It's like garbage, but like a good kind of garbage, you know? These frustrating backhanded compliments that stink of insecurity. No one wants to admit that they like the anime thing, so they have to apply some mental gymnastics and say that they like it as a guilty pleasure. They can't just say that it's good. They still gotta take those pot shots 
and say that it's good because it's bad, or that they recommend playing it so long as you close the doors and windows and make sure mommy isn't watching. So what is it about Japanese RPGs that need to be separated from the West? And why don't other genres get the same treatment? I don't have the answers, but I do think it's something interesting to think about. So please humor me as I meander around and try to play around with the thoughts in my head like I'm Benedict Cumberbatch in Sherlock, organizing my thoughts floating around me. I apologize in advance if this video is all over the place with random thoughts that I typed out in a Word document at 3 in the morning. So, uh, yeah, bear with me. When I was a kid, I was a really big fan of G4 TV. I would watch it every day and keep my eyeballs glued to shows like X-Play, Attack of the Show, Cheat, and my personal favorite, Cinematech, which was literally just a marathon of video trailers and openings. But it was awesome. I discovered a ton of new games that way. I remember being a 12-year-old child watching the opening sequence to the 3D remake of Final Fantasy III and actually kind of tearing up over how beautiful it was, including the amazing Nobuo Uematsu music and everything or having my mind blown over the very first time they showed the Portal teaser trailer and showing how the portals worked. Seeing one of my greatest passions in life, gaming, show up on television felt pretty great. It was almost like a form of validation in a way. Nerd culture has always been looked down upon, even in the present where it's slightly more accepted. Seeing nerdy things like video game trailers and reviews on TV was exciting and brought a lot of people together to share their love for this hobby that exploded into a full-on art form that has now surpassed even the movie industry. Of course, anyone can try and be nostalgic about the old days and assume that it was all great, and part of me wants to see those days return. But sometimes it's better for the past to stay in the past. Why do I say this? Well, because sometimes your memories can be deceiving, you remember all the good parts while ignoring or simply forgetting other parts that may be more uncomfortable to confront in the current day. Whether it's good or bad, all those moments are important because they play a part in shaping and molding you into the person you are today. A part of that molding process can include instilling good things into you like wisdom, critical thinking, empathy, curiosity, or awaking your creative mind so you end up making your own video games and telling your own stories. But also, there's the opposite. When kids grow up, they are also instilled with some more questionable things like biases, prejudices, assumptions about other people, and fear amongst other things. As much as I liked being able to live in a world where I had my very own video game channel to watch, I realized, now that I'm older, that it might not have been that great, especially when my personal taste went contrary to the mentality that was proliferated by these shows which usually involved creating a negative stigma towards Japanese content. Not always though, I must admit. My favorite game of all time is The World Ends With You, and I discovered it through the X-Play review, where they gave it a 5 out of 5. And Dragon Quest VIII ranked pretty well too. So there are exceptions that you can see if you search for them or just remember it. They weren't 110% haters of Japanese stuff, just most of it, you know? <laughs> Living as a Mexican kid during the 2000s, I always had to hide the fact that I really, really liked anime things. My other friends also liked Dragon Ball and Pokemon, but that was pretty much it. Those were the only two that were like acceptable for most people. Anything that wasn't that was met with the stink eye, and then you got ostracized from the group. Even stuff like Avatar The Last Airbender wasn't all that accepted simply because it looked like an anime. And because it looked like the thing, then therefore it was the thing and therefore not as cool. It wasn't until much later that everyone went back to watch Avatar and now it's practically everybody's favorite animated show ever. That's good. The kids that I grew up with were more interested in pretending to be big boy adults and impressing their friends with all the adult stuff they like to watch. They would always brag about watching South Park, Happy Tree Friends, Family Guy, believe it or not and basically anything that came out of NTV, animated or otherwise, like Jackass, Beavis and Butthead, stuff like that. Even with games, they would go for something more hardcore, right? Like sports games and shooters or anything that could pass as realistic for its time. It was very much American programming and games that focused on what I like to call the pretending to be a big boy adult starter pack, which involves the sacred triforce of violence, sex and drugs. When these powers come together, all the edgelord teens and preteens gravitate towards it like a moth to a lamp. 
I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I wasn't one of them, because I definitely was. I loved all of those shows, just as much as anyone else. And a lot of my favorite games are super western as well. But I was interested in anime and Japanese games way more at the time. And music, but that's a whole other thing. At the time, anything that looked too colorful and cutesy was determined to be too gay for them, and I had to hide the fact that I liked it a lot. It made it difficult to fit in with other kids and to truly behave like myself. It didn't help at all that there were shows on TV like X-Play that always found every opportunity to take pot shots at RPGs, especially of the Japanese persuasion, called JRPGs. Back then, I didn't really notice it, but when you get older and you go back and watch those episodes, I personally don't think that they hold up very well. Watching X-Play as an adult is a very different experience. When you have a platform like that with a bunch of nerdy teenagers like me salivating at the mouth for an entertaining show that appeals to them, X-Play was basically the only choice anyone had. There was no other video game themed channel like it. It makes me sad to see people's accounts of their time watching X-Play and getting really disappointed at seeing a game that they were legitimately interested in get slammed down by the reviews on that show because it was too anime, or oh, it's so Japanese, and their hair is weird, and look at how they're dressed, or they're decrying the fact that Japanese games had attractive women in it, always focusing on the boobs, implying that they're only there because there's this fat, smelly, balding nerd somewhere that lives in their mom's basement, and they want to pretend to have a fake girlfriend and not have a life. And it wasn't just X-Play. The gaming media at large back then, and in some cases even now today, they largely imply this about their own audience that they're supposed to be appealing to. I've heard it a million times, and I still hear it now. It's a stupid stereotype that I have no idea where it comes from. I've been to a ton of conventions, clubs, and other nerd gatherings, and out of the thousands of people that I've seen in real life, that stereotype only fits with, I don't know, like three people, I can fit them in the palm of my hand. I guess the other 99% of perfectly well-adjusted normal human beings out there don't count. It always has to be this one South Park picture, and God forbid you portray them as anything other than the most pathetic thing you can think of. There were a lot of stupid stereotypes that were reinforced back in the day and etched into the minds of young people watching the show that wanted to be perceived as cool and not a nerdy sack of Cheetos. And X-Play clearly sent the message that cool people played the Western games and weirdos played the Japanese games. I really don't see why there needs to be a distinction other than needing to find a way to separate yourself and not be associated with a group of people you don't like or at least an imagined stereotype of someone or an entire culture that you don't like. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I was under the understanding that all of us were nerds here. <laughs> we're all here because we're all geeks in some way. We all like games or movies or comics or whatever. But for the longest time, people have deemed it okay for the nerds themselves to call other people nerds and bully their own kind so as to not associate with the ones that like the weird foreign thing that has the scary boobies in them. I like shooting stuff with big guns. I don't like to talk about my feelings. What are you, gay or something? You're not allowed to sit with lunch at us at the cafeteria. I said it before and I'll say it again. It just reeks of insecurity and ignorance. And even now, in 2023, disappointingly so, you see people like Adam Sessler slamming down the thought of enjoying a game like this by calling Botan Kaitos, an old-ass GameCube game that he reviewed a long time ago, a boner simulator, and flat-out just calling it anime porn and juvenile. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that people within the industry were, and still are, super toxic about anything with an anime style. It's this strange thing where people are willfully and sometimes even proudly ignorant about Japanese games but still be more than happy to drag them through the mud and condition many young people throughout America to hate Japanese games for unfair reasons. That Botan Kaito's review is particularly rich because just recently that game got announced for a remaster and everyone that I saw reacting to that announcement really freaked out and got really excited about it. I guess people just really love their boner simulators, I guess. And then those kids that watch that kind of content grow up to have their own gaming shows on the internet. And guess what they do? They spread that anti-anime perception to all of their fans, repeating the same thing they were told as kids. 
Although the hypocrisy is always funny to witness, because a lot of these same people that claim to hate stuff like excessively long cutscenes, melodramatic dialogue, too much dialogue, seeing hot women on screen, turn-based combat, and other aspects of JRPGs are also the same people that will turn around and tell you that Final Fantasy VII is your favorite game of all time. You know, the one game that encapsulates every single thing that anime and JRPG haters claim to despise in their games the most. And while I'm at it, I would like to remind everyone that Mario, Zelda, Star Fox, Earthbound, Dark Souls, Cowboy Bebop, and many more are Japanese things within gaming and anime. All those Souls games that you like are technically JRPGs. But of course, nobody calls them Japanese games or JRPGs. The most common excuse I hear is that it doesn't feel or look like an anime, which to me reveals an important discovery. People's perception of what anime is, is very narrow. As a non-Japanese person, when you think about the word anime, what's the first thing that comes to mind? If you are Japanese, then it could be anything. In Japan, the word anime is just an abbreviation for the word animation. It's extremely common in Japanese culture to shorten longer words like this. For example, Spongebob in Japan is just called an anime because they don't make the same distinctions that we make here. But if you go on YouTube and type Spongebob anime, you'll get a very different result based on what non-Japanese people think an anime is. You can see this perfectly encapsulated as well in a VTuber clip where an English-speaking VTuber is talking with a Japanese VTuber about their favorite cartoons. The Japanese VTuber talks about Courage the Cowardly Dog, Dexter's Laboratory, and a bunch of stuff that here in America we would label as cartoons. The other VTuber gets really confused at hearing this and even expresses a little bit of disappointment at not hearing what she arbitrarily defined as anime. I think that these instances are not bad. In fact, I think they're just innocent little mistakes due to cultural differences. One should never assume evil when ignorance is more than enough of an explanation. When comparing both perspectives, the results can be really interesting to reflect on. As I said before, most of us have a really narrow view of what anime is. There's a very specific kind of image that comes to mind, usually a bright, colorful image containing an attractive girl that might give you some panty shots occasionally. That character will talk about her feelings a lot and fight evil with over-the-top attacks and the power of love. For a lot of people, that's what Japanese animation is like, as if it was a singular genre. What people often forget or ignore is that Japanese animation is a medium in and of itself. There's romantic comedies, slice of life, action, horror, and a bunch of really brutal, violent stuff that's definitely not for kids. And of course, you have the 18 plus pornographic content as well, that English speaking countries call hentai. All of it is pretty clearly organized into their own genre and subgenres. But a ton of people that grew up on X Play and Angry Internet Man game review show from 2008, you'll grow up thinking that anime is only one thing. Either it's Dragon Ball, or it's porn that you should be ashamed of watching. This misconception has been etched into the minds of so many people that when they expose themselves to something that doesn't fit their specific definition, they don't even perceive it as anime or as a JRPG. In my experience, that's the number one excuse for why people love a show like Cowboy Bebop but refuse to watch anything else you recommend to them because god forbid they get called a weeb, right? That is also an excuse for why people play super cheesy games like Resident Evil and Final Fantasy VII but they won't give the same courtesy to other games that look like quote-unquote weeb trash. Even if everyone tells them that Xenoblade, for example, is super good and it's selling great, people won't even touch it because of how it looks on the surface. And in the age of the internet where everything can be manipulated, cut out, and taken out of context, people will just see the clip where the girl with the boobs shows up, and that's more than enough to call the entire game pornographic and embarrassing and shame anyone that likes it, and just reject it completely. But those same people will also type hashtag Team Tifa on their Twitter. Which leads me to the second most common excuse I hear, nostalgia. Somebody grew up playing Japanese stuff, but they didn't know that it was Japanese at the time. They just played it and enjoyed it. And as an adult, that's one of the few exceptions they will make. But again, frustratingly, they don't realize that if they like this anime thing, maybe they will like the other anime thing. 
but those brain cells never activate to help them realize that this is an opportunity to try new things, to expand your horizons and be more well-rounded in your gaming experience, as opposed to digging your heels even deeper into the ground and refuse to change your mind about Japanese games. I don't know this thing, so it's cringy and weird and probably made for pedophiles to enjoy. But this other thing that I do know is good, so it magically doesn't count now. I'm not a weeb, you're a weeb. Man, isn't it funny that every time I like an anime, I have to keep gaslighting myself that it's not an anime, so that I don't have to associate with people that I openly mock and disrespect every day for just enjoying different things? Isn't that strange? Isn't that funny how that works? So with all that said, do I still think that the term JRPG is this awful, racist, xenophobic thing that needs to be banned? No, no, I really don't think so. Human beings are full of bias, and we need to be careful to not confuse xenophobia with just insecurity, or at least people being really overprotective about their comfort zones. Remember, the older we get, the more stubborn and set on our ways we all are. Not only that, but also realizing the power that we have over our young people. This whole story reminded me of the Fishman Island arc from One Piece, where one of the biggest takeaways from that arc was to not pin the blame and direct anger towards the humans doing the Fishmen wrong. The argument that certain characters make in that story arc is that if you let hatred spread amongst your people, in particular with your children, then they will carry that with them as they grow up. Fishmen kids will grow into Fishmen adults, having a deep hatred for humans, even if they've never met a human and don't know anything about them other than the negative things that they were told to them by the people that came before them. In fact, the main villain of that arc is a racist fishman that despises humans and is trying everything possible to stop everyone from liking humans and making sure that they never coexist with them ever. One of the characters that fights against him asks him a question. What have humans done to you for you to hate them so much? What brought you to this point? What's motivating you to enact all this violence? And the villain's words are quite shocking and eye-opening because the dude says, nothing. Nothing at all. The humans have done nothing to him personally, but he still hates them anyway. Where he was a child, he idolized his fishman brothers, and it was those adults who had the incredible power of influencing the youth that corrupted him by transferring all of their hatred onto the next generation. And there's also this part where he says that he was like sent from heaven or whatever. He was crazy. But the point is, is that he knew close to nothing about humans other than all of the bad stuff that he was led to believe about them by other people that were hateful. He was told that they were bad, and so he took the words of his loved ones to heart and never let go of it. He really has no purpose of his own, to the point that they call him empty, an empty enemy. He doesn't have any true goals. He's just a mouthpiece for other people's hatred that have nothing to do with him technically. That is how powerful it can be when your toxicity is inherited. It is surprising seeing how much we can be affected by the information or lack thereof that we ingest at an early age. We spend so much time thinking that things are one way when it's actually another. You're told your entire life that a certain kind of game from a certain country is not as valuable as the ones from your own territory only to find out that those people never had your best interests in mind and only used you as a way to spread their prejudices as far as they possibly could, whether knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, the damage has still been done. And it is still being done by the kids turned adults that were influenced in this manner. There's way too many people that get crapped on for simply having an anime profile picture on their social accounts. There's still a lot of highly influential people out there that are dismissive or even hateful towards JRPGs and anime content, but they make exceptions and excuses for the handful of anime games that they personally grew up with, while still openly mocking people for liking stuff that's really not that different. And if only these people gave these games a chance, maybe then they will realize the big mistake they are making in going out of their way to avoid these unforgettable experiences that have left such a positive mark on so many of us. In closing, I'm going to echo something that my brother told me a long time ago. Some people just like different things. And that's okay. 
That is a perfectly fair and reasonable statement to make. However, the problem is not that people don't like the same things I do. That would be stupid. The problem is not liking or disliking. The problem is the reasoning behind the like and the dislike, especially if the thing you hate comes from a place of ignorance. As soon as you start asking questions, you'll be severely disappointed in discovering that a lot of people's reasoning behind what they believe, what they like or dislike, is that somebody of influence just told them that they shouldn't like that thing. Whether that's their parents, their friends, game journalists, their church, YouTube personalities, etc. A lot of these people are influences in a young person's mind. And they are simply told that they shouldn't like certain things. And those are all of the reasons that they have. They grow up, they internalize it, they run with it, and that's just what they believe forever. So remember, everyone has different tastes. But I think those need to be discovered on your own, without people jerking you around and pressuring you to favor certain things over others. There's no reason for you to just like everything and not have to pick a side. As long as you have that, then I don't care if you hate anime or anything else for that matter. If I ask you why you hate JRPGs or anime, and you tell me that you gave it a chance and it's simply not your vibe, then cool. I'm not gonna worry about that because you tried it, you gave it a chance, you took the time of day, and made that decision for yourself. However, I will start to worry if I ask you what Japanese games or weebs have done for you to hate them so much, and your only answer is simply nothing.